Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 410, Skinny Fat. Are you losing your mind? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. The Florida Atlantic University's Comprehensive Center for Brain Health published an article in Clinical Interventions in Aging, which is a journal on aging, that talks about sarcopenic obesity. They call it skinny fat. And the reason that they wrote the article is that their research is supporting a conclusion that, to me, is frightening. I mean, one of the fears that I have about aging is losing mental acuity, right? L- losing my, my mind, my memory, my mm-hmm. executive functions, decision-making mm-hmm. capacities, all those things. I've, I've been around elderly people who have suffered those impairments. Mm-hmm. And, and for me personally, that's just very frightening to, to imagine myself in that position where I, where I have lost those abilities. Lose I mean, our communication skills. We, we end up regressing to a younger childlike person. And that's not what you want to do when you're 90. No. Or 80 or 70. And I won't be able to win at Jeopardy anymore. Yeah, that's right. So, (laughs) and especially for people who have you, their minds are their business. Their minds are how they think or like what we do. That's, that's everything we do basically. I Mm. mean, to, to us, that's our living and being able to think is important. Now, I wasn't skinny fat, but I but I was getting there when I lost my testosterone. And the biggest problem I had was forgetting words, forgetting the word I needed in the middle of a conversation. It was always a label. Mm-hmm. It was somebody's name. It was it was a street. It was the name of a restaurant. Although I don't really pay attention to names of restaurants, I just go where everybody else is going. But but in general, it was labels, and that's really common as the first step to dementia or losing you losing your ability to to remember things Mm -hmm. so this it that happens with last lack of testosterone Mm -hmm. but here they're talking about losing your short-term memory your long-term memory and your ability to make Mm -hmm. decisions your ability to think through like going home a pathway to get home uh or walking through a building and remembering that that's executive function Yes, it's a sarcopenia. Well, what the article said, and this is, the, again, the University of Florida Atlantic University, their brain center, uh, they did a study of 69 and beyond year old people mm-hmm. measuring their cognitive impairment, their cognitive decline as they have gotten older. Mm-hmm. And they did a series of standard tests uh, for measuring that mm-hmm. and, and for each person that was a member of the study. And what they found is that there is a a demonstrable impact from the condition known as sarcopenic obesity Mm -hmm. that leads the level of decline. Followed subsequently, if if you don't have it, the combined effect. Mm -hmm. Sarcopenia itself is the next highest impact. Then the third highest impact is obesity. Mm -hmm. So either sarcopenia or obesity alone can cause cognitive decline. Mm -hmm. But if you've got them together... If you have this unique condition mm-hmm. that we, we talked about in our, our previous podcast, the combination of those two does the, the most damage to Which your is global executive functioning. Low muscle mass. Low but muscle high mass. High fat mass. And ha- high fat mass. But the, you the may not look conversion fat. Conversion of f- muscle cells to fat cells. Right. So as you age, that can happen. And in, in if you are sedentary, if you still consume a high caloric factor uh, and you don't exercise, mm-hmm then your body will convert all those calories into fat tissues. We already know that. We've known that historically. We have the issues with obesity and and, uh, diabetes as we age. We have an epidemic of those two Mm -hmm. conditions that are, we don't know which one is causative and which one is reactive, but they they Mm -hmm. appear together, they're parallel all the time. And now they're saying 
Well, there's a subcondition in there that's also of critical interest that we need to be aware of, and that subcondition is sarcopenia. And sarcopenia is the loss of muscle fiber, muscle mass, the conversion of that into fat cells. Making making you, like we said before, look... Skinny. You may look skinny. You may look skinny, but you are not very strong, and you have low muscle mass. Mm -hmm. And muscle mass is very important for burning calories. Muscle mass is important for getting around. Muscle mass is important for uh, to keep your bones strong. So muscle and muscle mass is um, basically parallel with testosterone levels. So people who are skinny fat can reverse that by getting their muscles larger right. and they will be losing fat from the inside of the muscle and then from around their body. And you can't, once you reach a certain edge, you, age, you can't build muscle mass unless you have a foundation of testosterone mm -hmm. that feeds that quality into those muscles. That's true. All the commercials say you can take this and you take that and you're going to make more testosterone and more muscle. But if you're over 50, you probably won't make any anything more and you'll keep declining in well, muscle mass. And the testosterone alone doesn't build your muscles. It just gives you the underpinning, the capacity to build your muscles. It stimulates. You have to do the work. It stimulates the building of muscle. Mm -hmm. So you could be sedentary and make more muscle, but you're not going to make normal muscle mass. You're not going to recover from being skinny fat by just sitting there and taking testosterone. And you have to eat enough building blocks, enough protein of muscle because when you exercise, you break down muscle that day. That muscle is out, goes out of your body, those pieces of muscle. Then the next day, that's why we usually lift weights every other day, the next day you recover and you build muscle. So in someone with enough testosterone, that's what happens. In people who don't have that or are aging and don't have testosterone, they break down muscle whenever they walk around, but they don't build it back. Okay. And you need, and you also need to eat the building blocks to build it back. But it's a vicious cycle because the the less you exercise, the mm -hmm. less muscle you have, the more sedentary you become. The less calories you burn. The less calories you burn. But in our culture and our diet in America, those of us who sit around all the time tend to eat things mm -hmm. that are high in caloric content mm -hmm. and and not good for us. And so that vicious we love cycle. We to death. We give them cake and pie cake and pie and sugar and, and donuts we love and soda them and, and then we make them sick yeah and old well you see really obese people walking around and they have these half gallon soda things with them and they're drinking multiple sodas Sugared a day soda. mm -hmm. uh, and it's just like an IV with so high sugar harmful yeah it yeah. is but, but so what happens so if you as you get older if you are losing muscle mass and getting fatter what happens to your brain? How does it impact it? And so they did this study. The average age of the people in the study was 69 years of age. The results from the study showed that sarcopenic obesity, or skinny fat, was associated with the lowest performance on global cognition, followed by sarcopenia alone, followed by obesity alone. Obesity and sarcopenia are associated with lower executive functions, such as working memory, mental flexibility, self-control and orientation, when assessed independently, and even more so when they occur together. Why don't you define each of those? What well, that means to the average Joe who's, I mean, you're in the business of brains so and, and counseling. So what does, that mean, what does that mean as an example of each? Well, self-control and orientation, I understand it as meaning, are you able to stand and walk and direct and orient yourself mm -hmm. in the direction that you want to go? Somebody speaks mm -hmm. to you or somebody calls your name, can you, can you turn and focus on mm -hmm. them? Can you attend it to? The things that you are required or need, want to attend to. Mm -hmm. okay. But memory uh, and mental flexibility. Mental flexibility is the, the ability to take data in and process it and use it in a functional way. Learn things. Not only learn things, but use things that you've already learned. If somebody mm -hmm. says, uh, here are my keys, my car's the green Datsun in the parking mm -hmm. lot, go out there and move it over here. Can you do that? Can you okay. take that message in? Can you take mm -hmm. that data in? Can you retain it? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I can remember going to the grocery store with a mental list of five or six items saying, oh, I need to get these things. Uh, and my wife will give me a list. She said, here, get this, get this. Don't you want to write that down? I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm really good at this. I get to the store. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've talked to her about this. Go uh, ahead. I think so, yeah. <laughs> I get to the store and I can't remember. You know, I'm, I, make, I used to, when I was younger, make little acronyms and, mm -hmm. and 
I, I recite it or sing it or whatever, and I remember all the items on the list. Now, I don't, if I made a list, I don't have it. I've lost it. I put it somewhere. <laughs> uh, and, and if I didn't make a list, I can't remember. So she puts it on your phone. Well, that's one of the ways that we do it now, or we text each other. Like, what, what's on? What else am I supposed to get besides this? But so your your the working functional memory loss, is pretty good, though. I mean, that's not that's not it's not that bad. I know it's not that bad. That's just kind of a joking kind of a thing, but but it's real, and it's a real concern. It is real concern for most and people, we, and we all have that experience mm -hmm. occasionally. You know, where you 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 somebody says, "Who was the 16th president of the United States?" Well, and I you're had going, never, no idea oh, ever who know. that was. I never studied history. Well, you, you remember did. in school, in grade school, and they made you memorize all the states and state capitals? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You haven't done that in 45 years? <laughs> Thank uh, you. <laughs> do you still remember all of them? If you no. haven't used it, no, it's the odds are you don't unless remember. Unless you do crossword uh, no. puzzles. Uh, yeah, unless you exercise it in mm -hmm. some particular way. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we have like a, an active vocabulary. The average person has an active vocabulary of about 2,000 words. That's mm -hmm. all they ever use uh, themselves. Mm -hmm. But many people have passive vocabularies of five or 6,000 words. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you run across a word somewhere, you know what it is. It mm -hmm. doesn't cause you to go, what the is that? Mm -hmm. But to come up with that word, it's not a word you use. Mm -hmm. So you, The recall is not there. Yeah. So you have your active vocabulary mm -hmm. and your passive vocabulary, your recognition mm -hmm. and your recall. So as we measure those things... The gaps begin to show up as you lose mental acuity. Both of those vocabularies decline, and your ability to find the right word. I mean, the same thing happens yeah. if somebody has a, a stroke, uh, mm -hmm. and then they suffer from aphasia or ataxia, mm -hmm. and they lose the ability to. Th they know the word they want to use, and they get so angry because they know that the word they want to use is hamburger, but their mind blanks, they can and they can't it. find hamburger. <laughs> they they can't can draw say it. That. Well, what they do in the hospital is they bring in these little boards with, with common words on it mm -hmm. and point to them, and they can recognize, oh, mm -hmm. hamburger, yeah, I'll take that one. Or they go through the alphabet. A starts with an A, starts with a B, starts with a C, and help you spell the word out that, that you can't find. So what you're and describing so is frustrating. how I remember my grandparents. Being like that? Being like or that. Or you remember it by having to go through A, no. B, C. Oh. No, I remember my grandparents <laughs> having that issue. Yes. And then I remember my, my mother and father becoming like that yeah. over time, which is if you ever watch it, you don't ever want to be that person because it's so sad and so frustrating oh. that they, they aren't the same fast, quick people well, that you remember. And if they know it themselves, like I have a 95-year-old neighbor, sweetest lady you would ever want to meet, and she's really struggling with this now. And when we have mm -hmm. a conversation, she will start a sentence and explain a common thing, like talking about a tree that fell in her backyard. Mm -hmm. And we both know that that's what we're talking about. But she can't find the word tree, and she gets so frustrated, and she looks at me and and, and wants me to finish the sentence for her. Mm -hmm. And so I start filling in the blanks with, with common words mm -hmm. until I hit the right word, and, and she recognizes mm -hmm. it. When, when I say the word, she's like, yeah, that's what it was. But then two sentences later, she's lost another critical word. So this is a common thing yeah. when we stop making testosterone, when we stop exercising, when we stop eating a balanced diet with lots of protein— when we um, don't take care of our diabetes, when we don't take care of other medica or our other um, diseases that we have medications for, right. or we don't take the medications, then we don't feel well, we sit there, we don't do things, we don't have the motivation to get up and do things. And so we make fat, we lose muscle, and it gets worse and worse and worse because they've tied this together. Now, I, I always, there's a lot of research that, ties testosterone yes. together with with remembering short-term memory and and labeling uh, ta uh, uh, tasks like like it's that that restaurant you know mm -hmm. we're going to Napoli or we're you know that kind of labeling thing so basically testosterone is associated with when it drops over time that that ability goes away as well so a dementia like situation but now they've tied it to muscle muscle mass and obesity. So the obesity part has to do with inflammation. So the muscle mass decreases blood flow to your brain and decreases brain growth. And the um, obesity part provides inflammation, which then it's, it's like a catabolic effect. It breaks down the tissue. 
That's right. what inflammation does. So you always does. use terms anabolic and catabolic. Mm -hmm. Anabolic means you're growing. Catabolic means you're breaking down. Like okay. osteoporosis is catabolic. You're breaking down the bone, but you're not building it back. Okay. Uh, sarcopenia is catabolic. So you're breaking down <laughs> muscle, but you're not replacing it. So, and many dementias, your brain is shrinking. So you're, you're losing brain tissue. Your, your shrinking brain is catabolic. So if we are skinny fat, if we have that condition where we don't look obese, we're not uh, large, dough shaped. Yeah. Uh, we have some muscle structure, but the quality of the muscle fibers themselves mm -hmm. are breaking down and converting to fat cells. Mm -hmm. And so you may not be obese. Mm -hmm. You may not look plump, but what doctors are finding in this research is that if you have this condition and are skinny fat, then your executive function capacities are declining faster. And, mm -hmm. and they're actually, uh, if I recall correctly, 1.39% higher mortality rate in people with elderly people over 69 with this condition mm -hmm. than people that don't have this condition. So it's a third more likely to die. Uh, you have a lot more illnesses. It, and, and so the condition uh, for executive function, mental processes that enable us to plan, focus attention, remember instructions, and juggle multiple tasks. Those are all the conditions that are required for you to live independently. Mm -hmm. when, when they do the, the insurance search on, on whether or not you have coverage for, for uh, your old age insurance <laughs> is... Uh, Nursing home insurance. Activities of daily living. Can you mm -hmm. Have you lost three or more activities of day, daily living? Can you bathe yourself? Can you dress yourself? Can you fix a meal? Can you uh, call someone for help? And so when they start to question, do you have these capacities, these are the elements that they're looking at. Can mm -hmm. you do this? Therefore, can you still live independently? But Our, this happens a lot. Long, I mean, you start becoming skinny fat a lot, long, a lot earlier than yeah. this, this happens. So if, you, if you've already figured out that you have very little muscle mass mm -hmm. and that you're not really obese, but you have fat in replacement and you don't have this, you haven't escaped. It just hasn't happened yet. <laughs> that surface. <laughs> I mean, you, ha so. you have to look at it that way. It's a long-term thing that happens over time. But once it does, it's very hard to pull yourself back from it. So all your relatives are saying, is she losing her mind or has she always been an idiot? Because as you get older <laughs> and you lose these functions, they're tracking. And they're tracking your capacity to engage in a conversation, to solve problems, to do crossword puzzles. And even if we're okay, yeah. people expect us as we get older to be confused. So we're more likely to be labeled yeah. because we have gained another year. So it's really important to fight that and to fight the, if you're skinny fat, you end up shuffling. And, and, not, and not walking as fast as you used to. These are things that they test you on to see if you're, uh, if you're able to take care of yourself as well. So it's like playing dominoes. And, and you're looking at the table to see which of the dominoes that you stacked up have fallen. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you push over the first, if you, if you see these things on the internet where somebody makes an elaborate design with multicolored dominoes, mm -hmm. and they push over the first one, and the whole thing mm -hmm. does you know, all its tricks. Goes down. We are like that. And the diseases and disabilities of aging are like that. It's not a single event. It's a cascade of mm -hmm. events. And the initiating trigger of the cascade is the loss of testosterone. And so if we replace the testosterone, we can avoid or lessen the impact of the decline. Or delay. Or delay. The, the issues and illnesses of aging. So this is a marker. It's a measure. It's one that it can tell you where you are on the curve. But a treatment for it, a response to it, is to replace your testosterone. And if you lost your testosterone when you were 50 and you were 70 and you haven't done anything about it, you can get it back and you can get back some of those abilities. Mm -hmm. The bone structure, the muscle mass, the cognitive mm -hmm. process, all of these things are available to you in, in a better level, a more functional level, if you replace your testosterone. Many of my patients come in and start when they come back after they've had their testosterone pellets and the women start crying, going, I thought I had Alzheimer's. I don't have, I, you know, I was afraid yes. to be tested and I, yeah. and now my brain's fine. I mean, those are 60, 50, 60 year olds, not, you How know, many of it doesn't old work, are afraid of that, work you know? that fast, yeah. you know, for people who are over, over that, but it still works, but they come in and they're just so relieved that they don't have dementia. And if you've ever been 
fearful of that. If it's ever like faced you or your parents have it and you think it's going to be you, if you face that, it's a huge fear and stress. So that looking at it from that perspective, putting yourself in the place of someone with that problem, right. and you don't want that. Right. You have to plan now. And the way you fight that, the way you avoid that, is consider hormone replacement therapy, in particular testosterone replacement. Thanks for listening today. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.